Well, good morning everybody. My name is Dr. J.D. Swanson, for those who don't know me, and I'm the author of Karate Science. And what I'd like to do today is, it's our 21st class, and what I want to do is I want to start making sort of concepts around the switch from uh, Kihon to Jiu. And so what I want to do is I'm going to relate it back to several drills that we've done in the past, and we're going to look primarily at just footwork today. That's the point. And so as we go, I'll sort of relate it to another class that we did in a Kihon sense and then start talking about it in a Jiu sense. And then what we'll do in a subsequent class is we'll talk about the hand movements and things like that. For now, don't worry so much about what I'm doing with my hands. Worry about what I'm doing with my feet and look at the, the way that things sort of relate or interrelate. Okay. Hey, to Dutch. Hey. Us. Very good. So if you remember, one of my favorite drills, and I spent quite a few times on it, really talking about the idea of the, the basic four-step drill, step forward, step forward, step back, step back. So it was forward with the left, forward with the right, back with the right, back with the left. So just to recap and just to get you warm, step forward with the left leg, get him by Okay, one, two, then up, then forward with the right, one, two, and up, back with the, the right, block with the left, one, two, and then of course back with the left, block with block with the right. Right? So you all remember that, right? So what I would like you to do is go through, practice that. Get and brai, agyuke, sotuke, uchuke, shutuke. Think of all the key points if you've been sort of keeping up with me and doing these in order they build. Um, go through that and just keep in mind those basic points. Forward with the left, forward with the right, back with the right, back with the left. Off you go. Very good. So what we want to do now is let's think about it in terms of how we did a stepping version. So in this particular case, what I would do, remember the first one was step forward with the left, block with the left. So I'd do that. One, two. Then I would step forward, make the block. Right, so that's now stepping forward with the right. Then I step back with the right. Then back with the left like so. So you remember that kind of motion as well. So all I've done is one of them is of course moving in place. One, two, three, four. The second one is of course one, two, three, four. It's exactly the same footwork, right? But we're doing it in a very restrictive Kihon kind of way. So go through that, give it a go. Press pause, up, back, make sure that your Kihon is solid and strong. That's important, yeah? Very good. Okay, so from here, what we did then was we then introduced eight different ways that you could turn. And so, going back to the one where we just start from the spot, from the, well, the one spot, if you remember rightly, it was our basic four steps. So let's go through those real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, then if you remember rightly, I then pivoted on my left leg, making get on right. So it was this rotation round. So it was here, one, two. Then rotating round the, on the other leg. Three, four. Then from there, I shifted, right? Lift and just push off the leg. Then the other side. Right, so this is an eight step drill now. Forward with the left, forward with the right, Back with the right, back with the left, rotate round, pivoting on the left, moving the right, pivoting round, pivoting on the right, moving on the left. Then from here, shifting, pushing out to my left, pushing out to my right. If any of that's unfamiliar to you, I do encourage you to go back and look at those videos where I can press them into an entire class. So what I want you to do is go ahead, practice that drill. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Practice that drill, and then from there we'll move in to a more Jiu kind of focused and flavor. Good, press pause, give it a go. Very good, okay, for the next one, we're only going to concentrate on footwork. That's all I want you to think about. And so, when you make the transition from Jiu to, um, to, or Kion to Jiu, basic to, to Jiu, more free-flowing kind of motion, what you want to do is you want to think about your Kame. 
So the way I imagine our stances, whether it's korkuts, zenkuts, kibadach, whatever, they're extremes of motion, right? They're as far out as you can possibly go. When I think about zenkutsadach, I think about it, whether I'm in shulman or hami, that this is the very end point of a technique or the very beginning of another. So when I think of zenkuts, what this is, is that this leg is fully expanded in. It's, it's at the end of its motion. This leg's straight, yeah? Right, so it's fully expanded in. This one here is completely cocked and ready to pull me through into the next technique, right? So I have this idea of as I move, this is like the end of one technique, and this is the beginning of another. And that's how I imagine that. With korkuts, it's kind of the same, yeah? When I'm here, I'm imagining this is as far back, this is actively pushing into this brick wall here, and this is as far as I'm going to move backwards as well. Whomp, screw you, I'm not moving any further backwards. That's what you're saying. Or I'm dropping in place with intent to move forward. And you want that feeling in there. So feel this pressure here. Whomp. Then, of course, the next moment, ah! or of course, squeeze back and move. Right? Either of those kinds of actions. But the point is, is zenkuts and kolkuts, in my mind, are the extremes of action one way or the other. Kamai is a little bit different. So what I do is if you imagine, what you can imagine is that in this I have this extreme bend in my knee. I have no bend. I have an extreme bend in my knee. I have very little bend. And what I've done is if you imagine I have a total number of degrees, you know, imagine like a triangle adding up to 180 degrees, right, if you take all the angles. I imagine my stance is like that. Is that there's a total number of degrees and if most of the degrees are taken up in this angle, say, then what that means is that very much restricts my motion. With Kamai, you want the ability to be able to move wherever you need. And so the way that Okazaki Sensei used to talk about this is you would move one foot back and take that bend in the knee. Um, Kanazawa Sensei, Glucina Sensei, a lot of my instructors used to talk about this. So to me, this is like neutral in a manual car, right, one with a, a gear stick. And so what it means is that with both my legs bent and pushed, I have equal number of degrees near the leg, so I can easily push forward, right, my ashi, you know, but ashi, right, any of the sides, sides, I have that ability to be able to shift and move quickly. I have that springiness and the ability to be able to, from here, drive into any of those extremes of stances as I need. And so as you go, imagine your kama, imagine the footwork for that, where both legs are pushing forward, right? Notice I've got a little bit of weight out of my heel. I can push, I can use my gastrolemus easily, but I can shift as I need and as I want. The other thing, try to make sure that your bum isn't sticking out. Keep it tucked under, keep it squeezed, your center in control as you move, as you move your technique. So allow that piece to sort of stick in. So that's the key thing. What I imagine karate is, is we spend a lot of time making these long final positions. These are the strongest final positions we can possibly make. But in reality, we're able to expand into those strong positions at will and be able to connect and then immediately bounce out of them. That's the feeling, like we're a rubber band puppet. Floppy, 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 stick. Floppy, 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 stick. Floppy, floppy, stick, floppy, floppy, stick, stick, right, as we move. So it's this kind of doing, I'm doing, quit doing kind of action. So let's bring that in just for a start. All I want you to do, just making kamai, and then from here, just push off the rear leg into zenkuts, yakazuki. So nice, 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 push. So from here, just practice, push. Push, push, that feeling, both sides, give it 10 goes, feel, loose, Toink. string puppet, puppet, boink, then loose, give that a go, good, okay, now try the opposite, here, try expand back, kokuts, then push, then back to neutral, so kokuts, ha, yeah. kokuts, zinkuts, as you go. Try that, boom, boom, for a couple both sides. Press pause, give it a go.
Excellent. Okay, from here now, let's go through to our drill. So if you remember rightly, what we have is we have eight steps. I'm not going to use my hands, but you must have the feeling in the feet and the legs. So if you remember rightly, it's forward with the left, forward with the right, back with the right, back with the left, rotating, rotating, shifting, and shifting. So from here, instead of starting here, we're going to start in Kamae. Again, don't worry too much about the legs, we'll go into that in a subsequent class. So if you remember rightly, the first one was step forward with the left. So all we do here, all I want you to think about is this drive forward, me towards you, with this. So here, you can shift, make stance, here, zinkuts, then rotate. The feeling, something that's really important, if I borrow this bag, as a human in front of me, there's multiple lines that you might want to take. So you can sort of see this directly square onto you. Right? I may want to drive in and cut through their middle. Here. I may want to cut on a 15 degree angle to make the side. Notice my railroad tracks, my back foot have slipped right on the outside edge, so I can basically slip straight past. Keep an eye on those differences, and we'll talk about them in a little bit more depth. But as you move, have the feeling of expanding in zenkuts, then rotate the hip, then come up. You can add whatever handwork you want, or you can add whatever handwork you want, whatever way. The key thing is having that feeling, that expansion, Lift, push, as you move. Lift, push, depending on what stance you want to spring into. Sometimes I'll make it, then coil back up, and you can see that fairly, fairly often. So our first step is the shift. Second step is going to be a step, right? So first one was here, now let's move forward with the left. So while you're here, you can either step straight in, or you can shift that 15 degree angle. All I'm doing is literally shifting along the railroad tracks. If this white belt represents their path of this side of their body, right, and I'm here, notice I'd be kind of standing on both railroad tracks. As I make that step, I'm just replacing my foot here. As I do the step, I'm just, if I want to cut to their outside line. If I want to go to the middle, I just come up the middle. Likewise with the first one, if I'm here, I can cut straight down the line, in, or I can cut to the outside, this way. The choice is yours. So what I would like you to do, is I would like you to just practice those two movements. From here, Practice shift, then step. Either or, one, then forward with the right. Very good, press pause, give that a go. Excellent, okay, from here now, we're back to our initial position. We've done one, we've done two, now we're gonna do three and four. So, let's go through one, I always cut to the 15, I like it. Even though I'm a big guy, I wasn't always, so getting out of the way is always good. So here, it's gonna be a shift. Hop. Then from here, a step. Hop. Right, now we're thinking about our backward step. The next one was back with our right. So we're right side forward. From here, this is what you classically think about. From here, I shift. This way. Shift. This way. So that covers here. And again, this is what we're most likely used to. Here, in they come, shift, hit, this feeling. From here, the next one, of course, was left leg stepping back. So in this case, because this is forward, I'm now going to step back. Classic feeling. Here, step, here, step, feeling. 
So what we have is we have forward, forward, back, back, forward, forward, back, back. Same thing, just out of a Jew type stance. Press pause, give that a go. And then we'll come back, add on the next two and the next two. Very good. So we have the forward, forward, back, back. The next one, if you recall, is a rotation out. A rotation out, like so. So from coming, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate around the left, the right leg rotates. So from here, you simply feel this motion. The, but the next one is of course rotating around the right. So from here now, you've got to expand back and then pull. Expand back and pull. So we have now one, two. And again, if we imagine our human and their line of movement, If only we had humans we could move with. So from here, right, what I'm doing is I'm not going, right, I'm here getting out of the way. This kind of feeling. And again, this can of course be expanded all the way around if you need it. The opposite side. As I move, I can give myself enough room. The opposite side here is not shift and step. This is in trouble. I'm going to, from here, shift and I'm out of the way. I'm off their path, their line of movement. So here, oh, ah, as I move. That's there and in place. So that's the rotation piece. So once again, shift, step, shift, Step, rotate, rotate. Give that a go. Press pause and we'll come back with the last two. Very good. Okay, last one from here is the idea of shifting. Shifting. Something that's really important is don't, when you shift, a lot of people simply keep this leg anchored and shift out of the way. All that's done is put this right in front of them. And this is not the position I want to be in when an attacker is coming to attack me. You must shift both legs. Allow both feet to slide on the floor to get out of the way, to develop the best angle for your attack. Whether that's on a 30 degree angle, whether it's straight, whether it's slightly further forward, doesn't matter. The point is, Get this out of the way. So from here, from a gym kind of perspective, I'll just leave my human here. All I'm going to do, the first one, is I'm simply going to lift, push. And for me, I'm going to turn and face them. In this particular case, I'm going to keep tracking. So as they would come in, I simply lift, push. Then from here, of course, then from here, of course, I'm simply going to lift and push. To this side. So we've got shift and shift. This sort of idea. So nice and easy. Again, which leg do I move first? Don't move this leg. My body center has remained in place. I've crossed my back legs. That's suicide. Anyone who's done Kumite knows that. Instead, I'm simply lift and spray. In case you're wondering, MP, that's what MP's about. Right, so from here, push, shift, just shift. Here, just shift. This kind of feeling. So from here, try those two. Boom, boom, shift, shift. And then we'll come back and review and then sort of leave you with a couple of closing thoughts. Very good. Okay, so what we have in the basic sense, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right, all tied together. From here now, 
we just simply translate that with one leg in front of the other using kamae. Again, I'm trying not to use arm stances and really sort of cleanly into those. What you find is that the stances come about as the intent of the block or the punch come in. So what you'll find is I'm just really shifting from kamae to kamae. Think about my angles, think about if my bum sticks out, think if my head's wobbling, these kinds of ideas and keeping my guard up um, against my opponent. Again, pay attention to the angles that you're shifting. Notice when I had my spare human out here that I was shifting out of their way, especially in the shifting ones. Okay, so from here, think about that movement. So remember, it's forward with the left, which in this case is a shift, either straight forward or on a very, very sharp angle. So it's just here, one, go back. Second one is a step, right? Or just straight in, whichever floats your boat. From here now, the next one was shifting back with the right, so it's just a shift. Next one is a step. Next one is the rotation off the front leg. Right, so around, hop. Next one is the rotation off the back leg. Hop. Next one is a shift. Next one is a shift. Very good. So what angle do you shift on? You know, is it, is it 90 degrees? Is it, what, is it all the way around? Is it shallower? Depends on the opponent and how they're coming in towards you, right? And the position that you want to be in. Remember, why do you pass a basketball in basketball? Why do you pass to another player? To get, your, to get the ball in a better position to score, right? Or to hit in this particular case. So by shifting my body, whether it's forward or backwards or round or over, all I'm doing is position, getting my body into a better position to be able to get a chance to hit my opponent. So what I'd like you to do is go through this particular drill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And then practice it, of course, the other side. Shift, step, shift, step, rotate, rotate, shift, whoops, sorry, shift, and shift, right? Get that into your own head in terms of the order and the, the position. And what this does is this starts to transition you from a basic type of motion to a more free kind of motion. This helps with that transition. So brown belts amongst us, this is a really nice way to transition and start your body translating what you learned in Ippon Kumite, right? These classic rotational angles to now getting used to doing it from a more free kamae kind of stance. So give that a go, practice that, enjoy it. We'll come in and talk about the arm and the hip transitions a lot more in subsequent classes because they, they deserve entire classes on their own. For now, just play with the footwork and with that, have an awesome day. I'll talk to you again soon. Hey, us.